the guitar that we played. Uh, we played, I played on it. Up is all. We're so happy and we celebrate Come on and let your feelings show. Cause love is all. Well, love is all. Love is all. Ronnie sings, he opens his throat and sings those no top notes out, and it's wow. It's, and that's the feeling I get listening to it. It's just all out. Uh, feeling of uh, joy. Most people thought that Roger sang the song. Maybe that had something to do with it too. Maybe they thought, wow, this Roger Glover can really sing, can he? British Museum one day and found a very old poem called Butterfly Ball, which I like very much. And it was about the creatures of the woods, how they uh, all put down their anger for the day and have a good time. So I took the book and in my house in Norfolk, I, I spent probably a year doing all the pictures and the rest is history. I mean, it's it, at one point, I think it was considered the best-selling children's book in the world. And that's it. Butterfly Born. And the chords go... Let's try that again. Yeah, it's about a tune. Okay. I remember, I think it was the summer of of 72 and the Sunday Times had a colour supplement and in the colour supplement they were uh, showing illustrations from a new book and I remember looking at it and going wow they're great um, and that's the last thought I had until about a year later after I'd left Deep Purple I went in the office one day in our management office and there was the book lying on the table and I looked through it and I said oh yes I remember that so, well, how would you like to put it to music? So, well, there's a thought. Why me? Actually, why me was my first thought. Like chords again go. There's the chords to the verse. Well, the success of the book really engineered in my mind the possibility of maybe doing it on on stage uh, maybe doing it as a movie and uh, I was trying to think who who would create a wonderful musical and I knew the Pink Floyd and I mentioned it to them and then um, Somehow, Roger got mentioned, and I met with uh, Deep Purple's management. And I still, to this day, don't know why they picked me, because my track record at that time was being a bass player in a band, uh, and a hard rock band at that, you know, um, with a reputation for a lot of noise. I spend my money and I took my turn. I want you, I need you, I gotta be here. Um, so why they'd want to pick me to do this, I've, I've no idea. I think it was blind faith. I'm a man of different parts. I do a lot of different things. Um, there's Roger Glover, the, the heavy metal bass player. There's Roger Glover, the writer. There's Roger Glover, the producer. Um, there's probably a lot of other things I do as well. Um, as far as Butterfly Ball is concerned, Love Is All, it was Roger Glover, the writer and producer.
This is the original chord chart that I had at the time. I'd written it out in pencil. Always wrote out in pencil when you're, because you get the whole thing written out and somebody will say, hey, we're changing it. So I always wrote everything out in pencil. And I had that bit, because it was going to be for something else. And then we got to the chorus bit. Uh, from there, it leads into the chorus, which is the A minor. He started playing those dun 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 dun, and I went, yeah, that's great. So that would have been him, and and I would have said, I've got a melody that would go over that, and so it's yeah, it's pretty much fifty fifty, I'd say, the the songwriting on that. I can hear the, the the kind of musicality coming from Eddie. There's some really nice chord changes in it. And I can perhaps hear Roger's idea of what something commercial should be as the producer, saying, hey, maybe we should put that there, maybe we should do this first. He'd sit in the studio all night long doing one mix, and the engineer would be half asleep, and, and he'd force himself to keep going, do another one, another one. And the slightest bit, if there was a guitar sort of a an eighth of a centimetre too loud, he'd scrap the whole thing and do it again. And that used to drive me mad. Most of my songs are, are very melodic. Roger's very riffy. It's smoke on the water. I mean, it's all very heavy, riffy stuff. I'm the sort of Paul McCartney-ish, childish tunes, simple tunes, which I like. I like melodies. And I think that's why me and Roger work well together. I had that input and he had the aggressive bit and the whole thing together blended. There were three chords over the intro which went and there's the stop. So I thought it'd be nice to have just have a little line because they go up in fourths. You got B, E, A, and then D. So I came down with the little line that drops down and goes. And that's it. That's the intro. Because uh, we didn't actually have an intro, but we had he just based that the rundown. Just round the round the, uh, the, the the chorus. And he just played it on guitar, dun, 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 and we recorded it. And, and when we played it back, I thought, shit, it's the uh, sunny afternoon, the kinks. But it wasn't conscious, a conscious theft. <laughs> and at the end of the verse, I played a little line, which was Nick from a Motown song that goes. <laughs> and then you get into the chorus, which was. Played little lines and little pentatonic lines. Uh, there are a lot of those little ad lib lines that go on during the song. And then Roger came up with the, the idea for the middle, which was what do you call that kind of a middle? It's a. Uh... into the verse again. All you need is love and understanding. Everything about it, let the people know. We're so happy and we're celebrating. Let your feelings show. To me, Ronnie made the song special. He, he lifts it, he takes it to somewhere else. I mean, we I, I, I tried singing it and it it was OK, you know. Roger tried singing it and it was okay, and then Ronnie sang it, and you think, Jesus, that's a whole different thing. He just changed it, transformed the song.
last time I sang the song was the last take that we did in 1973. I've not ever done it since then. I remember the first line, I think, everybody's got to live together. <laughs> I don't remember what comes after that. All the people got to understand I think one of the things, of course, is that it was very Beatle-like. I think that was one of its great connections. It, 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 and I think that it, because it was a very up song, a very cheery song, a very happy song, perhaps. And since the Beatles were mentioned, and it, not by name, but certainly All You Need Is Love uh, was mentioned, that uh, I felt that a Beatles-y sort of approach was um, would be appropriate. When I first heard it I thought ah Beatles and I thought that's how it would end up and of course when they did that little piece in the middle with it between the verse one and verse two of course that is also a little pastiche on all you need is love as well I decided, reading the the, uh, the poetry in the book, that it should be a sort of "All You Need Is Love" type song, um, and a, a parody of "All You Need Is Love," if you like. Uh, "All You Need Is Love" Part Two, you know. <laughs> well, the Beatles thing was "All You Need Is Love," and uh, we wanted to steer away from that. Roger sometimes says that we consciously nicked it, but I don't feel that we did. Nothing very much happened. It was played an awful lot on the radio, uh, very heavily played and promoted, but it didn't catch on some, for some reason. And then uh, uh, the publisher, John Craig, who handled, who was handling the whole project, Butterfly Ball, he rang me up uh, and said, um, that song, Love Is All, he said, it's gone to number three in Holland. And this was early one morning, and then an hour or so later, he said, uh, it's, it's gone to number two now. And then by lunchtime, it had gone to number one. And, and there it stayed for, I think, 13, 13 weeks or something, which was quite incredible. It was really successful in various other parts of Europe as well. Um, people covered it. I remember going to see Sasha Distel um, when he played at the Palladium. And he had the, the cartoon behind him, and he had an album called Love Is All, and, you know, it's the, the great Roger Glover, Eddie Harding song, Love Is All. Wow, you know, it's, it's like a real mark, it's an achievement. Sasha Distel heard the song, and he wanted to use our backing track, because uh, he did, he, French musicians, he said, we, he would never get that, that sound that we'd got. So he said, could, I, could he use our backing track? And, and one of the guys at um, Deep Purple's office said, send him the record and he can just sing along with it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the mentality of the music business in those days. I mean, they expected the guy just to sing along with Ronnie. <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. It does sound like the guy said, let him sing along with it. And it sounds like karaoke. <laughs> he had a hit in France before we did. He had the first hit in France. He was number one, and then a month later, we had the number one as well. So it was number one twice in the same few months or whatever. It's a happy song. It's very difficult to write a happy song without sounding trite. Um, and of course, with a message like love is all, you're very close to being trite because it's you know, a very idealistic sort of song. 
So, I mean, I think we got away with it because we were writing more of, like a parody. I always felt it was a, a joint effort. The whole, the whole butterfly ball thing. I always felt was a me and uh, Roger joint thing. So I was, a, I was supposed to be honest. I was a bit disappointed when it came out and it said Roger Glover and and uh, I suddenly became just a guest. <laughs> and I think some other people were quite upset as well. But yeah, it's one of those things. We were eating one day and someone came in and said, I "Have something for you, Ronnie." I said, "Oh, what's that?" Here it is, first goal record. My first goal record, on the record, it said Roger Glover. <laughs> I mean, it said presented to me, but it was had Roger's name on the on the, the record and 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 everything. And I was just kind of secondary, and that annoyed me. I must tell you, that annoyed me. I said, you'll have to change this. Then, if I'm going to get a goal record, I'm going to be recognized for what I did because everyone thought Roger sang that song. Early on, they all thought that Roger sang it because it's the album says Roger Glover and guests, and so they. And uh, that annoyed me because I know what hard work I put into it and I wanted to, to get my credit for what I did. So they took the record away, they changed it, and so I had my name on it, finally. I'm not a singer, um, but it was my project. And having a big hit under, under, under my name and uh, Ronnie being the singer, I'm, you know, if that's a confusion, then I, I can apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> film of it, um, I don't like at all. I've never liked that. I had nothing to do with it. But to me, it was shoddily done. It was tastelessly done. It was cheaply done. Um, and probably the most embarrassing moment of my life was being invited to the premiere of the only film that I've actually starred in and hating it. I sat there in the special seat, surrounded by all the people that worked on the concert and on the album. And uh, the lights went down and this thing came on and I just hated it. And I just wanted to run away. And I thought about leaving the theater halfway through, but I thought, no, I don't. I'm too nice a guy for that. I'll stick it out and I'll say thank you when people say it was interesting. <laughs> oh, that was really interesting. So I've, I've got a bad memory of that. left purple a matter of months before and that was not a happy occasion that was, uh, it was a difficult time to live through I mean I was in arguably the biggest band in the world in 73 and was sort of forced out of it so I was going through a depression an unhappy period <laughs> everything changed I think Roger's life changed we, all, we we got very close me and Roger and we and we started to go through funny phases and, and, and buying silly big houses and I just wanted to get away from everything really and and it was a big drinking period for me I was it was heavy boozing and and then I just kept on producing albums then I started to have some success in Japan and then they started using that stuff for commercials for whiskey, believe it or not. <laughs> so then one of my songs became a big hit in Japan for whiskey. So that's what I've been doing uh, through those years. And I've done solo albums. I'm doing another solo album at the moment.
because it was uh, such a success, much to my surprise, um, kind of stuck with me. You know, I, I became a children's illustrator. I'd gone from being a, what people thought was a, a, a very druggy rock and roll illustrator to being a, you know, a very cozy children's illustrator. All you need is love and And Love Is All is the. It went on to have a life of its own. You know, just it wasn't the inter the uh, the parts that made it up. It wasn't the musicians. It wasn't the arrangement. It was. It's now a whole thing called Love Is All that's out in the world. I got like three or four projects for animation uh, in town here, children's projects. Uh, I'm working on a, a musical, uh, a horror musical. We're doing a concept album. Uh, so the next deal album will be a album. It's going to be hearkening back a bit more to what I used to do, which was more gothic kind of uh, fantasy writing. And then in June, we're going to be touring with, uh, with Purple for well, five or six dates, and so I get a chance to see Raj again. Deep Purple. Uh, very much a band with the future. Um, for a long time, we were a band with a past. Now we have a future and a past. We're having such a good time. Our songwriting has changed, uh, our whole attitude has changed, and everyone in the band has just blossomed again, which is a great thing to do at this age, you know. I produce records. I've just done Gina Washington's new album. I have a lot of my back catalogue out at the moment. And uh, I teach two days a week at Boston College in Lincolnshire. I teach guitar and music business. Uh, currently, I'm working on a new project with Eddie Hardin, a new band called ER. We'll do lots of the old stuff that, well, not lots of it, but some of it. You have to, you just have to do that, something that someone knows. Otherwise, no one's going to want to go and see something they don't know what's going to be. And won't be doing Love Is All. <laughs> Apart from anything, it's too high for me. Mm -hmm. 